Welcome to the Goodyear City Council meeting. We're excited to have you be a part of this important public process. Tonight, you will have the opportunity to address City Council on both non-agenda and agenda items. The agendas and the speaker request cards are located on the tables outside of Council Chambers. You must fill out a speaker card in order to address the City Council. Please hand in your completed card to the City Clerk before the start of the meeting. If the meeting has already begun, please hand it to any City staff. You may also check the I do not wish to speak option on the card. This allows you to still voice your opinion on an item on the record without having to speak. In accordance with the Americans with Disabilities Act, please contact a city staff member if you need any assistance. Public comment on a non-agenda item will take place during the citizen comment portion of the evening. These are items that don't appear on tonight's formal agenda. The city clerk will call your name when it's time for you to speak. At that time, please approach the podium and tell us your name for the record. You'll have a maximum of three minutes and there is a timer visible from the podium. When the light changes from green to yellow, your time is coming to an end. When the light turns red, your time is up. Note that you may also choose not to speak if other speakers before you have said what you wanted to say. Shouting, cheering, and loud noises will not be tolerated, and violators may be removed for disrupting the meeting. Goodyear City Council meetings stream live on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and online at GoodyearAZ.gov. Follow the city's social media pages so you don't miss out on all that's happening in Goodyear. Thank you for coming to this meeting and being an active part of your city. And remember, it's a great time to be in Goodyear. I'd like to call the regular meeting to order for March 28th, 2022. Will the city clerk please read the roll? Let the record reflect that all members are present. Please join Council Member Kano in the Pledge of Allegiance and Invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for Dear Heavenly Father, as we enter these chambers to consider the matters facing the city, we can't help but acknowledge all of the uncertainty and strife going on in the world. Many of us have family and friends facing serious circumstances or illnesses. There are matters that weigh heavily on our hearts and mind, and yet we stop and pause to reflect our many blessings in our city for our mayor and council, staff and leaders, our residents and businesses, for our growth and prosperity. For these things, we give you thanks. May we never take for granted your benevolence and mercy. Lord, grant us the wisdom to make sound decisions for Goodyear. We pray for the safety and wellness of our police, fire, and military personnel. Please give them discernment to navigate these days that we live in. And we ask the same prayer for our President Biden. We pray this in your name. Amen. 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 We have one communication item tonight. The item is to recognize Brittany Avacino. Avac Av I'm giving my best shot there. Uh, Genesis Ramirez and Alexis Salmaron for steps taken to help save a life. Please introduce yourself. Good evening, um, Interim Fire Chief Tim Way. I'm excited to be here tonight to present to you three life saving awards to three amazing young ladies. On uh, December 13th of 2021, the fire department responded to a water rescue in the canal just north of Fire Station 183. When the crew arrived, they found a man barely visible, surrounded by debris, and desperate for help. As a result of the quick activation of the 911 system, three young women, Alexis, Brittany, and Genesis, the man was rescued and pulled to safely. Well, it's a great story, but nothing tells a story like a video our communications department put together a little something to, uh, to highlight their efforts. Yeah. 
were walking to the lit Drake's from Dutch and we heard hello, hello, help right around here. And at first we were scared because we were like, who's young, hello, hello, help. So we didn't know what was going on. Then as we walked further down, we saw his head in the water and so we were like, oh, we should call 911 because he's in serious need of help. Early activation of the 911 system is the first link in chain of survival. And so the fact that these uh, young teenagers saw an emergency happening, uh, they were brave and active, stayed calm, called 911. They're able to give a, a good description of where they're at, considering it was a tough location to be able to talk about. They actually went out to the street, which really helped save valuable time in this emergency situation. And they directed the fire crews back um, to where the emergency was occurring. These girls actually saw an emergency um, situation and acted on it. Um, instead of turning a blind eye, walking away, maybe running home, telling their parents what they saw, um, that, saved, that saved an extreme amount of time um, in this emergency and actually had a direct impact on the survival of this victim. When you see someone in trouble, stay calm and call 911. Brittany Acevedo, in recognition of your selfless and rapid act of rendering assistance in a sudden and unexpected situation which resulted in preservation of life. Thank you. <laughs> Alexis Salmaron, all right. In recognition of your selfless and rapid act of rendering assistance in a sudden and unexpected situation which resulted in preservation of life. Thank you. Genesis, Genesis Ramirez, in recognition of your selfless and rapid act of rendering assistance in a sudden and unexpected situation, which resulted in preservation of life. Thank you. Now is the time for the citizens who would like to address the City Council on any non-agenda item within the jurisdiction of the City of Goodyear. Are we having any cards? No, Mayor. No speaker. Does anybody in the audience wish to speak? Seeing none, will the City Clerk please read consent agenda items 2 through 17 by title only. Number two, approval of minutes. Number three, recognize the City Council subcommittee appointments for the remainder of calendar year 2022. Number four, recommend approval of a request for an owner transfer of a Series 6 bar liquor license from Akayos located at 1474 North Litchfield Road, Goodyear, Arizona. Number five, adopt the fiscal year 2023 financial policies. Number six, approve the creation of mid-year CIP projects and approve expenditures to replace fire pumper units 695, 696, and 713 and related budget transfers. Number seven, approve the acceptance of a quick claim deed for well site 11 associated with the final plat for Air Park Logistics Center. Number eight, approve and authorize the execution of the partial termination and release of a water line easement associated with the SunWest Federal Credit Union site. Number nine, adopt resolution number 2022-2220, approving development agreement for Australia parcel 9.29, providing authorization and direction to take actions and execute documents necessary to carry out the intent of the resolution and development agreement and providing for an effective date. Number 10, adopt resolution number 2022-2222, approving development agreement for Australia Parcel 12.23 Phase 2, providing authorization and direction to take actions and execute documents necessary to carry out the intent of the resolution and development agreement and providing for an effective date. Number 11, approve the final plat of Estrella Parcel 9.29, subject to stipulations. Number 12, approve the final plat of Estrella Parcel 12.23, Phase 2, subject to stipulations. Number 13, approve the final plat of Goodyear Civic Square Parcel B, Phase 1, subject to stipulations. Number 14, approve the final plat of Goodyear Civic Square Parcel B, Phase 2, subject to stipulations. Number 15, approve the final plat for El Cedro Phase 2, Parcel 1A, subject to stipulations. Number 16, approve the final plat for El Cedro Phase 2, Parcel 1F, subject to stipulations. And number 17, approve the final plat of Cantamia Parcels 27, 28, 29, and 30, subject to stipulations. Thank you. Does anyone on the council wish to remove an item from the consent agenda? Seeing none, can I have a motion and a second to approve items 2 through 17? Second. 
kidding. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Before we proceed with the rest of the agenda, I would like to pull item, was it 26, out of order to be heard before the public hearing items. This item is to consider authorizing the issuance of the City of Goodyear general obligation bonds for public safety, fire protection, transportation, and highway improvements in the amount not to exceed $26,040,000. Again, please introduce yourself. Good evening, Mayor Pazillo, members of the council. Tonight I'm talking to you about debt issuance of general obligation bonds, series 2022. We'll talk about three items uh, associated with that bond. Projects, uh, planning, going around uh, the, the issuance, and then also the timing of the payments. <clears throat> so the projects we're looking to fund with this potential bond is Camelback Road in the amount of $11 million, renovation of Fire Station 183 in the amount of $5.3 million, and the expansion of the police uh, headquarters building in $9.7 million, total of $26,040,000. This action will exhaust the voter authorization in the public safety, fire protection, and transportation street and highway categories after extinguishing the authorization in parks and recreation three years ago and last year public buildings the only voter authorization categories left now are the sewer system and the storm water slash bridge and drainage category. Some of the planning going on behind the scenes, uh, these bonds will be paid for with secondary property taxes. Uh, the policies that you just adopted, the financial policies you adopted, has a $1.74 total property tax limit within it and these payments will be designed to fit underneath that limit. We will also limit any spikes we would see in property taxes and allow for future authorizations or issuances if necessary. Uh, the expected interest rate is somewhere between three and three and a half percent. And before we talk a little bit more about interest rates, I wanted to highlight the bond rating. Last week, Standard & Poor's upgraded our general obligation bond rating from AA to AA+. Plus which is now equal to being to the AA1 that we have with Moody's, the second tier of ratings below the AAA in both categories. A comparison of rates right now, we're estimating about three and an eighth percent uh, for the 2022 issuance. You can see last fiscal year, we had a, a rate of 2.18%, uh, historically low rates, uh, both in 2019 and 2021. The Municipal market data index right now is eerily similar to the 2017 issuance where we had about three and a quarter percent. Uh, you could say the difference between the two is we do have an increase in our bond rating from, from that time period. So we've gone up one grade since then. So about an eighth of a percent difference between those two right now. The timing of the payments, uh, since we have uh, two things we're kind of looking at here. One is the higher interest rate, so to avoid some of the overall interest costs, we're front-loading the, the payments. The other thing this will allow us to do is to keep us close to that $1.74 limit as we go forward. That'll be a little bit more apparent when we layer in the blue, which is the new 2022 uh, debt service payments, along with the current debt service payments that we have, the thick black line across the top represents our $1.74 tax limit that we have. You see that it's kind of a curved line or a, uh, it's got two different slopes here. So that's due to the, our, our forecast, which has higher growth rates over the next three years. And then it settles down the growth rate a little bit in the future years. That's why you see a difference in that projection going out. But you can see that over the next three years, we'll be right near that limit. And then in 2026 will have uh, the ability to issue additional debt out of the secondary property tax. And with that, I'll open up to any questions that you may have. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? Seeing none, uh, would the city clerk plead reasonable resolution 
number 2022-22-23 by title only. Adopt resolution number 2022-2223, authorizing the issuance and sale of City of Goodyear, Arizona General Obligation Bonds Series 2022, delegating the authority to approve certain matters with respect to the bonds, providing for the annual levy of a tax for the payment of bonds, appointing a registrar and paying agent for the bonds, approving the form of certain documents and authorizing completion, execution and delivery thereof, delegating the authority to approve and deem final a form of official statement, ratifying all actions taken and to be taken with respect to the bonds in furtherance of the res this resolution, and authorizing any ne necessary budget transfers related to the bonds and the projects financed thereby. Can I get a motion and a second to approve the resolution 2022-2223? So moved. Thank you. With that, open for discussion. Who wants to start? Anything over here? Over here? Uh, I would like to say I want to thank uh, finance, city staff, all involved to getting our bond rating up. To me, that's a good sign of our fiscal management policies. I want to thank staff. Uh, we're moving in the right direction. Maybe eventually we'll get because up to AAA on the one. That would be nice. But with that, can you say what the savings might be, the fact that if we were at that lower bond rating and we didn't get that increase, instead of 3.25, what might we end up getting? Mayor Pizzillo, uh, if you do a comparison just on the, the interest rate, so if you were to say we were going to get a 3.25% interest rate instead of a 3 and an eighth, it would be about a $450,000 difference over the life of the bond. So uh, it, the, the span of that, the bond is 20 years, but it's actually just 19 payments that we have over the next 19 fiscal years. So it would be about $450,000 of the life of that bond. And again, I appreciate all the effort of staff, finance, city manager. Uh, that 400000 is significant. And the fact that you're increasing that bond rating, I really appreciate that. With all that being said, um, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Here we go. We got six public hearings on the agenda. The first public hearing item is a use permit for convenience use uh, Starbucks drive through coffee shop. Open the public hearing. Go ahead and uh, introduce yourself there, Steve. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members, Steve Caraccio, Planning Manager. Do you have a use permit for you tonight? It is for a Starbucks drive through restaurant. And our location, we're in the Canyon Trails Town Center, Cotton Lane, Yuma Road. A large center, about 90 acres, all designated for commercial use. Uh, the pad for Starbucks right here. Here's Super Target as we wrap around Cotton Lane. Uh, then we go to Yuma Road, Cotton Lane. Nearest residential is right here, about 800 feet to the west within Canyon Trails. And then, as you can see, we have a lot of different commercial uses, several drive through restaurants already existing. Again, the Super Target, a lot of retail stores here. And I should point out, we do have controlled access at a couple different places, right here, right here. We also have several other access points into this center. And again, Canyon Trails Town Center, 90 acres, approved back in 2005. All of this is commercial use here. Uh, this development plan was what was submitted with the rezoning back in 2005. It is still pretty accurate. One big change is here to the north, the northern end, as proposed for a Home Depot back in 2005 and seven. Uh, it's proposed for a multifamily right now. And again, right here is where we're looking at the proposed Starbucks, one of the pads here along the perimeter of the property. And so this specific request, it's a request for the convenience use, the use permit for the drive-through portion of the Starbucks. It's about an acre in size within that existing commercial center. Uh, most of those improvements surrounding this pad are done. So parking, drive aisles, signage, landscaping, all of that is done. So with this request, Starbucks is proposing a 2365 square foot building with indoor dining. We we'll also have an outdoor patio to go along with the drive-through component. 
And so now we zoom in a little more to the site and the site plan for the Starbucks. This is the 2,365 square foot building. Uh, again, they'll have indoor dining. They'll have a patio here by the entrance. Uh, this parking field, a lot of the landscaping surrounding this parcel already done with the center's improvements. Uh, so customers entering the drive through they enter here at this point along the west side of the building, place their order here at the menu board, drive around through the queue, pick up their product right here at the drive through window on the east side of the building. And then exit, predominantly they'll exit right as that will take them either to other users within the center or out to our public streets. And at Canyon Trails Town Center, when it was approved, it did have a set of materials and colors that were approved along with the design that was approved for the center. Uh, the Starbucks building does incorporate the design and materials and colors that were approved for the center. And so in looking at this request, two main things we look at, will it be material detrimental? Will it fit in with the other users in the center? Uh, so again, we're in a 90 acre commercial center intended for such uses like this Starbucks drive through restaurant. There are also several others within the center. Uh, traffic and queuing all be internalized into the center onto the pad. Uh, there should be no impacts to our city streets. Uh, the queue meets our city standards of the five cars from the first stop. And again, the nearest residential is 800 feet across Cotton Lane to the west. So we do not see any adverse impacts to any existing residential areas. Uh, parcel is adequate size to fit the use. The queuing, again, will occur all on site. Hours of operations, uh, standard for this type of use within this type of commercial center. We're not recommending any restrictions on hours. Uh, again, all off-sites and a lot, most of the on-sites are complete for this center. And no other concerns. Right now, we're looking at just the use permit for the drive-through portion. All notice for the citizen review and for these public hearing were conducted in accordance with uh, state and city requirements. Uh, to date, staff has not received any opposition to this request. Uh, staff, we do find that it meets the evaluation criteria. Planning and Zoning Commission, they heard this item on March 16th. Uh, they also voted to recommend approval of this item to the City Council. No opposition at the Planning Commission meeting. Uh, Mr. Mayor, that concludes my presentation. Staff's available for questions. The applicant is also here. They do not have a formal presentation, but can answer any questions that the council may have. Applicant, I want to say anything at this time. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Anybody in the audience like to speak? Noticing none. Um, Go ahead and close the public hearing. Can I have a motion and a second to approve the request of a use permit for a convenience use Starbucks drive through coffee shop on 0.9 acres uh, parcel within Canyon Trails Town Center zone PAD commercial subject to stipulations? So moved. Second. second. All right. Open for council discussion. Who wants to start it off? Go ahead, uh, uh, Councilmember Campbell. I've got a question, Steve. Um, you're saying no recommendation, no recommended restriction on hours. So I know they say 4.30 to 9.30, but if they wanted to go 24 hours, they could do that. Mayor, council members, yes, staff is not recommending. We don't have any restrictions at this time. They could go in the future, change their business operations, and could go 24-7. Do we have any restrictions on any other Starbucks in Goodyear? I want to be consistent is what I'm getting at. Mayor, council members, none are coming to mind. Any restrictions on Starbucks or other coffee shops within the city. Okay, thank you. Vice Mayor Hampton. I can go back to the slide of the, the drive queuing. I said a question, is the whole parcel, is that whole parcel there theirs? Is the parking spots? part of the are those allocated to them or is there separate parking for the establishment outside of those so i know the whole the whole plaza is completely 
built already. So I'm just curious what that looks like. Mayor, council members, they do have This is the undeveloped portion, and then this is that existing parking lot. So they do purchase a bit of that parking lot. Just within their boundary, they meet city requirements for parking. However, this center does have uh, shared parking uh, cross-access agreements. So if you do park here, you can use this facility. So okay. on its own, they do meet it, but they also have the shared parking. Yeah, I, the only reason I bring it up is, I mean, well, it's my Goodyear really loves coffee, and it's probably gonna be very popular. So, um, the other day, my wife wanted coffee somewhere else, and you get, I got stuck trying to, I couldn't get out because the line was so long. You're parking and trying, trying to you park, and then you get out, and the line's blocking you in, and no one's gonna move it for you. So, I was just curious how that's set up with the drive-throughs, and just want to make it convenient for the future for people to come in and out and things like that. So it looks like this one, they have the parking spots across the way. So I think that would work out well. So I, cause I highly expect it to, to be very busy. So, so, uh, that, I think that was the only question I had, um, to the hours. I mean, the Philip Burroughs is already there and that's 24 seven as well. And so the Federico's across the way also. So, um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm good with it. Just had a question on, on that. So thank you. Councilmember Stipp. I actually have a procedural question for Christopher Baker. Should have given you the heads up on this, Christopher. Sorry. I got distracted before the meeting. We're seeing this tonight because it's a drive through. Yes, sir. That's correct. I thought we were working to get this out of our wheelhouse. We actually are. Yes, sir. Next month, I'll be pleased to present. Steve will be presenting the text amendment to get this out of your wheelhouse. Then I'll be pleased to hear it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's all I have. Yes, sir. <laughs> Council Member Bray. Council Member Kano. I just want to say that it's a welcome addition to the town center. I'm sure it's going to be very popular and just wanted to comment that I like that they've incorporated brick into their design. It fits in nicely. Yeah, I also think it's going to be an excellent addition to the uh, complex there. So with that, let's get a vote in. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Next public hearing item to consider is a rezoning for Thompson's Funeral Chapel. Open public hearing. Please introduce yourself. Thank you, Mayor. Alex Lestinsky, Senior Planner. Um, as you mentioned, my rezone before you tonight is the Thompson Funeral Chapel. The subject property is approximately three acres uh, west of Litchfield Road, north of Yuma Road, um, in between Camino Oro and Litchfield. Existing sites just as a point of reference, we've got Sunny's Boxing Gym on the northeast corner of, of Yuma or Western and Litchfield. Uh, the Goodyear Resource Fire Resource Management Building is just south here. Um, Goodyear also has a site um, just south of the, this subject property. Um, and then there's a Circle K convenience store uh, just south of that. Existing zoning around the property today, or excuse me, existing zoning of the property today is a split down the middle. Um, C2, where the Thompson Funeral Chapel currently sits today, um, and then the west half of the parcel is light industrial I1 designation. Um, the Thompson family, family has purchased that property and wishes to expand their operations to that vacant parcel. To the north, that property is actually designated as MF24, but Churches are, used, are permitted in any zoning district, so um, by the time it was annexed into the city, it was already designated as MF24, so it's just remained in, um, under, those, uh, under that zoning district since. Um, to the east, we've got Litchfield Road and then R17, single-family residential. To the south, so you can kind of see, this is I1 zoning district as well. There's a little piece that will remain as I-1. Um, the traffic management and clinic 
facility is C2, and then moving south continues to be C2. Um, to the west, like I mentioned, Camino Oro, and then light industrial district to the west as well. The proposal today is to rezone that entire subject property, about three acres, from C2 and I-1 to C2, just the general commercial, um, with a PAD overlay, um, which I will explain in my next slide. So the C2 general commercial district lists funeral homes as a permitted use today, which is why the property is zoned C2 today. Um, the light industrial district, um, the one that to the west side, is does not list funeral homes, therefore their expansion would not be permitted as it's written today. Um, and the, the, they would also like to include an above ground columbarium um, on their site. So that is not listed anywhere in the zoning ordinance. So our solution was to um, combine the two and create their PAD overlay to allow uh, the above ground columbarium use and the expanded funeral home use. Um, so, like I just mentioned, the modification in the, for the PAD overlay is to allow above ground columbarium uses. Um, these are some examples that the applicant has provided. Um, they are intending to do a garden memorial site um, with, the, with the columbariums included. This is a conceptual site plan not to be approved with the rezoning. Um, on this east half is the site today, um, proposing a new building, uh, which they can present to you if they'd like to. Um, but then up here was where they were proposing the garden site in between the churches to the north and their existing site. Uh, as far as public comment goes, we haven't received any objection to the rezone. Um, we held a meeting at the Thompson Funeral Chapel on February 23rd. There was approximately 15 people in attendance, um, a lot of staff, employees. Uh, Council Member Hampton was there. Um, no objections were received at that meeting. Um, there was a resident from the residential to the east. Um, he was curious and did not seem um, opposed to the I, or the rezone at all. Therefore, staff recommends approval with the rezone, um, and then the Planning and Zoning Commission did recommend approval as well on March 16th. That concludes my presentation. The applicant has a presentation, um, if you would like, uh, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Would the applicant like to say anything at this time? Yes, we would. Thank you very much, Mayor and esteemed Council, uh, for letting us, uh, giving us the opportunity to present this to you today. Uh, as was stated, the Thompsons, Sean Thompson and Cynthia Thompson, have uh, purchased the land to the west of their current property. Their overall goal, it, since they've been in business for 65 years, as it's been going, and serving the Goodyear community very well in that establishment. But currently, the establishment is taxed for space. So they decided to purchase this property to the west, which would help them to expand their services to the city of Goodyear and its, the local community. With that purchase, though, it required an, a rezone to the C2. This will allow them to take their existing chapel and transfer it to the new location, the new property, and take the existing chapel and refurbish it and repurpose it to offices, office spaces so they can interact with their clients and also have more workspace for their staff. So the increase in use by the new chapel would be just a very slight increase in um, amount of people that could be there for a service. But at the same time, the service has been increased to where they can provide an area for the services that happen there could also have a reception there before or after for their memorial services. And then the pad overlay would allow them for a nice memorial contemplative garden that Sean and Cynthia have said is open to the entire community to come at any time and be able to use that and wander through and just decompress from the day or any worries that they have or just even enjoy a nice little area that they can sit down, enjoy some shade, and also come and mourn their loved ones. Sean, would you like to say anything? I'm here for questions. Okay. That is That's our it? presentation. Okay, thank you. Any speaker cards? No, Mayor. 
Would anybody in the audience like to speak? See none. Go ahead and close the public hearing. Will the city clerk plead re uh, resolution number 2022-2218 by title only? Adopt resolution number 2022-2218 declaring as public records those certain documents filed with the city clerk entitled official supplementary zoning map number 21-20 and legal description Thompson Funeral Chapel. Thank you. Can I get a motion in the second? So moved. Second. With that open for council discussion, council member Stipp. I can't look at Sean without getting emotional, so I apologize. I've spent way too much time in his establishment over the last few years. But um, I think the Thompson Funeral Home is one of those uh, awesome success stories in our city of a small business that has grown and grown and, and just keeps going. And I, um, I, I really uh, I celebrate that and really appreciate um, that you're staying here, you purchase additional land to move forward. Um, so this is uh, this is going to be great. Um, the fact that you're building a new chapel is is awesome, and and the remodeling that you're doing. Um, I guess for Alex, the question that I have about the PAD overlay is, um, should they in the future want to do something else beyond just the I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. Is there oh, other stuff that's allowed by this PAD overlay that they don't have to come back and do this again because we're zoning this thing for funeral home activities? I don't want the Thompsons to go, hey, we want to do whatever this new thing is in the funeral industry. Are, are we fle is this flexible enough or is there something that we need to do to keep it that way? I don't want them to have to come back. Um, Mayor, Council Member Sip. The, with these uh, zoning criteria to allow funeral homes, um, I believe under that, and if Christopher's around and wants to correct me, he's welcome to, um, we would consider anything additional um, incidental customary uses then with, within that category. Okay. So uh, some other thing comes up. We don't have to see the Thompsons back here for that. That's, that's what I'm trying to avoid. Um, again, the Thompson Funeral Home is a great success story in our city, and uh, I would support this um, all day long. So thank you. Council Member Loretano. Uh, I, I agree 100% with Council Member Stipp. Um, they were great. My mother passed away, and, and, and your, your people are just wonderful. I, I love the idea of the garden and having the, the, the place and everything. So I 100% support. My question was going to be kind of along with council member steps. We want to make sure that as, a, as we grow, that you can grow with us and that you don't have to keep coming back here to jump through hoops. So, so thank you, and I do support this 100%. Thank you. Council member Kano. I just want to make a quick comment. I want to say thank you for providing such an essential service in our community. Uh, you serve with excellence, and it makes a big difference. And I'm so glad that you are a local business and not uh, a major corporation, as much of that business is. So thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Campbell. Well, I just want to thank Sean and Cynthia for being such a wonderful, integral part of our community. And you're so giving to all of us. And I just want to thank you. And we wish you much success. And this larger chapel is long overdue because I can't tell you how many services I have attended there and it was standing room only or outside almost. So thank you for your investment in our city and we wish you the very, very best. Vice Mayor Hampton. Yeah, same same thing. I, I do appreciate you staying in Goodyear and expanding in Goodyear. I mean, and you have more than one business in Goodyear too, so you're very invested in our community. So I appreciate that as well. So I'm, I'm definitely... For this and I appreciate the expansion and the garden and the different ways to celebrate our, our loved ones in life in good year as well so so to your point uh, councilman step to yeah any flexibility you can have if you want to expand even farther is always great as well so thank you councilmember Bray all good well, the only thing I'd like to say is kind of mirror what Councilmember Stipp and the others have said. Um, you're a great addition to this community. Many, many success in the future. With that, um, mm -hmm. time for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Will the city clerk plead read ordinance number 2022-1531 by title only? 
Adopt ordinance number 2022-1531, conditionally rezoning approximately 2.9 acres of land located north of the northwest corner of Litchfield and Yuma Roads from light industrial I-1 and general commercial C-2 to a planned area development pad zoning district with an underlying zoning district of C-2 with pad overlay. Amending the zoning map of the city of Goodyear, providing for non-abridgement, providing for corrections, providing for severability, providing for an effective date, providing for penalties, and directing the city clerk to record a copy of this ordinance. Can I get a motion to second to approve ordinance 2022-1531? So moved. Okay. With that, time for a vote. Uh, well, open for council discussion. Anybody have anything else to say? We're done? All right, good. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. The next public... Whoops. Oh, okay. I just wanted to thank you. We're, we're proud to be part of a good year. Um, we know that the kind words that y'all just said are very hard to get and they're easy to lose, and we understand that. So thank you. You're certainly welcome. Next public hearing item to consider is an amendment to the uh, 10th 10 303 Business Park Planned Area Development. Open for public hearing. Please introduce yourself. I am Karen Craver, Principal Planner with the City. Thank you, Mayor Cazillo. Good evening, Council. The subject property is in Northwest Goodyear, just west of the 303 alignment at the Northwest corner of Indian School Road and Minnesota Avenue. It's just on the west side of Minnesota Avenue from the new Amazon distribution facility that recently opened there. The subject property and the Amazon site were approved in 2007 as the 10303 Business Park PAD. And both properties remained undeveloped until the Amazon facility was just built in 2020. The 10303 PAD included uh, underlying I-2 zoning on the Amazon property, that being the General Industrial Zoning District, and it included I-1 light industrial zoning on the subject property. The PAD also included stipulations and standards that were intended to address the planned Televerde uh, single-family residential development that was going to develop to the west along the kind of along this curved line here and up to the corner. And the stipulations that they added in were that a use permit would be required for any buildings greater than 250,000 square feet in size located just adjacent to that western boundary and that for any dock level bay doors on the west side of any industrial building that use permit would be needed as well. There was a standard in the PAD that said that the I-1 parcel, which is the subject property, would have a maximum building height of 40 feet. And that's what the I-1 regulations were at that time in 2007. And most of you probably know that in just 2016, the city increased the building height in I-1 to 50 feet because not only was that the kind of industrial buildings we were getting in the city, but it's also what the maximum build, building height was in I-2. So they both matched up as of 2016. Uh, there's been a lot of changes in the area since 2007. That Taliberti residential development did not happen. At least a, a dozen industrial buildings that have averaged over 600,000 square feet with maximum building heights of 50 feet have developed to the east and south of the subject property. You know, Sub-Zero, Dick Sporting Goods, REI, um, the, the Amazon building itself, Ferrero Rocher to the south. Uh, Microsoft is also building in the area and will have 700 or will have several hundred thousand square feet of data center. And the 303 has been completed and has become a major industrial transportation corridor. And now Meritage Homes has purchased that Taliberti property 
and they've begun to plat it for single family homes at eight dwelling units per acre. Um, last year, towards the end of last year, we received a PAD amendment request regarding the 10303 PAD from Majestic Realty Company. And if the amendment is approved, Majestic is proposing to develop two warehouse distribution buildings on the property, uh, just over, uh, just under three, 400,000 square feet and just over 400,000 square feet. Neither of the buildings will have dock level bay doors facing the former Talaverde site. And they'll both be within the maximum I-1 building height of 50 feet. To facilitate that development, staff is recommending that the requirement for the use permit that had been originally imposed be deleted. And in its place, we're recommending some general conformance criteria for the development that will occur on that piece of property. And, and the idea being that what they're telling us they're going to do, and this is the conceptual site plan before you that was submitted by Majestic Realty in conjunction with their PAD amendment request and that we've been working with them on, on it for quite some time. We wanna make sure that what we've come to fruition in this site plan, conceptual site plan process actually happens on the property. And also because it will be part of the PAD amendment ordinance should that be approved tonight it will run with the land. So if for some reason Majestic doesn't do this development and someone else comes along, we've already got the criteria in place to have what we think is a good development in this area and one that takes into account the fact that there will be future residential development to the west. And so those conformance criteria are that there would be a minimum of two buildings on the parcel because we don't want to end up with a 1.5 million square foot building sitting there adjacent to the residential. Uh, no building shall be larger than 500,000 square feet. The maximum building height shall be 50. No dock level bay doors facing that west property line. And the standard... Uh, 30 foot wide landscape buffer with a double row of trees that is in our zoning ordinance when there are dock doors facing a public street. We, we implement that buffer requirement, but even though there aren't gonna be any dock doors, we're gonna implement that requirement anyways. And then in addition to those requirements, there are, there's a significant, uh, on the conceptual site plan from Majestic, there's a concept, uh, significant distance between the property line and their buildings themselves and then where the truck courts will occur on the uh, long sides of those buildings. So we went through the, the standard public participation process. We notified everyone who owned property within 500 feet of the subject property. The only inquiry we got was from Meritage, Meritage Homes, and that's the home builder who was going to develop that, that former Televerde property. I had a, a team's phone call with him, and he's aware that this is what is happening in the area. These industrial buildings are what are being developed. And he said, as far as we're concerned, we're neutral. We, we're not going to come out and say, yay, this is a wonderful thing or anything. But he said, we're not going to oppose it either. We know this is what's happening. We have, uh, you know, buffers that are included in our plats that are being taken through the process. And I also showed him the conceptual plan that I showed you. So he saw how the buildings were set up and the criteria that staff is recommending for development of the property. So Meritage is neutral on the, on the proposal. Uh, no other property owners attended the citizen review meeting in January. Those same property owners were notified about the PNZ meeting and this meeting, no one attended the PNZ meeting. 
And we had, of course, posted the property, had the legal ad in the paper as well. So with the recommended inclusion of the general <coughs> performance criteria in the, men in the amendments, staff and the planning commission by a vote of seven to zero, find that this amendment promotes orderly growth, orderly continued growth of what is happening there now. And it adheres to zoning ordinance, design guidelines and engineering standards. And we ask that you approve the PAD amendment subject to the ordinance that was part of your packet. Thank you. Is there anything that the applicant would like to say at this time? No, oh, coming up. Yes. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, council members, good uh, evening. Um, I wanted just to introduce myself personally uh, and kind of following the uh, funeral home. Um, we're a family owned operated business. We've been in business for uh, over 70 years and um, we get very involved in the communities we're in and it's nice to see that reflection of the funeral home and uh, we have a lot of those same reflections in the cities around the country we do business in. So I appreciate you hearing uh, our request this evening. And I also like to pay a, a little gratitude to the staff. We have worked uh, uh, with staff for uh, well over a year now, and we've made a number of modifications to our site plan um, to take into consideration the staff's thoughts, worked with fire and traffic and everybody else. Uh, and it's been a good experience for us. I will share with you, uh, I build these buildings all over the United States, and uh, it's not always that easy. Your city is a good city, and uh, we look forward to being here. So I'm here to answer any questions, and uh, I thank you again for your time. That's nice to hear. Thank you. Um, are any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? Then I'll go ahead, close the public hearing. Will the city clerk please read resolutions number 2022-2219 by title only? Adopt resolution number 2022-2219 declaring as a public record that certain document filed with the city clerk entitled legal description of the property. Can I get a motion and a second? So moved. Second. Wait a minute. Wait, wait. <laughs> I guess the first was Councilmember Bray and the second. You can have it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> there we go. There's the second. All right. Open for council discussion. Who wants to start this one off? Go ahead, Vice Mayor Hampton. So I had a meeting with staff earlier today on this one just to clarify some things. So I don't know if you can pull up the aerial along with this one as well. So I, I'm okay with it being there. I just had some questions around just the distance. I think this is the first industrial that we're going to have where it shares a wall with future residential. So I just wanted to make sure what that looked like, I guess, if I'm going to be living across the street from there too. So the 50 feet, how far, the, how, the building height is 50 feet now. How far away is the closest residential again? Do you want to see, do you want to take a look at the flat for the residential? Sure, or? yeah. Just up to where the wall is. Okay. So, and I have an up close version to show you. This is what is being platted right now is Abel Ranch, and this is the, the plats that Meritage is doing. And so you can see there's a very small part of the overall plat that is adjacent to the subject property. When you go in a little bit closer here, these are the lots that are in proximity to the Majestic property. Up on the north end, up here from the corner of this lot just to the property line, it's 125 feet. Down here, it's 160 feet. And then the, the corners of these lots are 60 feet and 30 feet. Then when you put this site plan up against that, let's see if I can, if I can do this. 
this, sort of, kind of. Um, this, this property line is this property line right here. So in addition to the distances from the lots, got the buffer. then from the property line to the building, it's 144 feet here. It's 164 feet here. And it's 163 feet here. And then the dock doors and the trucks are going to be even further away as they are down here. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. And I'm not a mathematician to understand. I don't, I don't think any, but any house will be like in the shade of one of the, <laughs> I think it's too far for that. Yeah. So, and then. I wouldn't, I wouldn't think so. Yeah. And then. The other question is with the with the dock door. I appreciate the dock door is not facing the development, but I'm just the lessons learned from some neighbors who are even farther away from a UPS place and the sounds that they hear from just trucks backing up and things like that. And I know we're having a we're turning them, turning the doors so they're facing each other, so it's creating kind of a, a sound tunnel potentially. So I'm just curious, I, I'm just thinking in the future, resident complaints potentially of people that don't don't like the noise and I'm not sure how to mitigate <laughs> that or we put disclosures that with the, with the met with the, with the people who build our building and that they make the residents aware. But I just know we've had complaints in the past with, and UPS is at least a street away from, from, from their area. So. I don't know what I'm looking for there. I don't know if there needs to be a stipulation uh, on noise levels there just for the residents' sake that might be there. I'm not sure what that looks like. I don't want to hinder it going in, but I just want to I just I just don't know what that would look like. So, I guess that'd be my question, I guess, for the developer. And those those are my those are pretty much my biggest my biggest questions was just the sound, the height you took care of for me. Um, yeah, so other than that, I'm supportive. I'm just curious what, how to mitigate sound and future residents and the resident, for example, that said they couldn't get any sleep because of the, the noise. So, all right, I can come back to it. You can answer the question around sound or maybe we can talk about a stipulation or something. So, well, Mayor, if I may. Vice Mayor Hampton, uh, some of the things that we discussed internally today after hearing about your question was, you know, perhaps there can be some sort of uh, internal requirement for the operation of these buildings and the trucks that come to it. So there isn't the beeping that there's more of a white noise sound that's utilized when the vehicles are backing up. Um, in, in terms of a noise study, we haven't required that previously on the industrial buildings, but you're right, this is a different situation here in terms of adjacency to residential. Yeah. There's also, you know, they have an eight foot wall along their property line. I don't know if another couple feet perhaps might block some more of the potential noise. Yeah, and, and I'm not sure. I'm just thinking if I'm a resident living in that cul-de-sac right there. I'm, I'm Hopefully, I'm fully aware that I bought the house there to begin with. But just understanding the neighborhood's potential future thoughts and concerns and how to mitigate that. And if it is white noise machine, I think over by Liberty, they have a white noise machine like on the wall to the neighborhood of Palm Valley there. So... I'm not sure what that looks like. So, and I don't want to un, put undue burden on the developer because I think it would do well there. I just, they are, they are neighbors right to a lot of residential that's going to be there as well. So that's, that's my question and concern. I guess the rest of the council can discuss what their thoughts are, but I would like some, something that would at least continue the project to go forward, but also hopefully mitigate to some degree. I know it's not going to be quiet, but some, some degree, the, the noise that'll be there. So, thank you. Go ahead, um, Councilmember Lortano. 
Um, first of all, thank you for presenting. And I do think it's a very good plan. It's got a lot of distance between them. Um, can you put up the one that shows where it is in relation to like the Amazon and the Microsoft? Because yeah. I think that kind of helps. There we are. So it's here. So it's already by some other industrial areas, right? Mm -hmm. And those houses aren't built yet, right? That's correct. They're okay. in the platting process. They're platted, but no one has actually purchased those houses. And I think that's where it's a little different than we have neighborhoods that are already developed. I mean, we have people have, who have come and complained about the Goodyear Airport, um, and it was there first. So th there is some responsibility. If noise is going to bother me and I'm a homeowner, then I should do my research. I feel like I'm channeling our late mayor. <laughs> I should do my research, and I should look and say, well, maybe that one on the call is that probably isn't the best lot for me to pick. Um, so there is some personal responsibility. I think you have a good plan. I, I like the fact it runs with the land, and I think that's important because that's going to give certainty to that neighborhood. That gives a lot of certainty to say this is, this is how it's going to be. This is how it's going to be developed. Um, obviously, there can always be tweaking later on with specific business. We don't know what business is going to go in there, and I don't want to put stipulations to the development because we don't know exactly what the hour. I mean, there's other things that we've talked about for other businesses and worked at, but... I'm happy with that. I think there's a very, very large buffer, the wall, the you know, and then, then the distance with the street that I don't think is going to be a problem. So I'm very supportive of how it's written right now. Thank you. Council Member Campbell. Oh, thank you. Well, I think yeah, it's very interesting and it's exciting, and I'm sure that since uh, Mayor Taj didn't, they're neutral. They're going to tell anyone that buys their property, this could be developed here. So it's like telling them we're in a no-fly zone or you're going to have airplanes coming over your house. You know, you just do that. Um, as far as the noise problem is, um, if I remember correctly, if you said the dock doors were on the inside or are they on the right of the... Because... Where are the dock Here, doors? Here's the common property line, and there'll be dock doors here and here on the long sides of the building. Very good. This and then, is all vehicle employee parking. Yeah. So there. they'll be able to enter and exit at the bottom where the U shape is. Right? Go up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, we can't compare this property and this noise with the UPS facility. You just can't do it. Because UPS has trucks going, and I live in that development, and I'm not complaining. I know they're there, and I knew they were coming, but I didn't know they were there when I bought my home in 1999 either. But it's just it's it's just the nature of the beast. Um, I really think that um, depending on what is built there, with the buffer that we are requesting that they do, and the setback that's already there, I think it's going to fit in very nicely. Um, do they do a lot of truck traffic out of the Amazon facility there? Do you know? My assumption is yes. Well, <laughs> then it's, you know, there we go again. And then they're going to be doing uh, trucking in and out of Amazon and possibly trucking in and out, out of this one. So it is what it is. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to put any more burden on the developer because he's, going to develop a piece of property that should be developed the way it is rather than with homes. So thank you very much. Council Member Kano. I wanted to say, Karen, that when you put up the plats, it was very helpful and compared to the property. I, I think it answered a lot of questions that I had. And this is a very uniquely shaped piece of property. And I think you've done an excellent job in making it manageable, a win-win. Uh, I did think about the noise. I, I think that is a valid concern. But I also, my other thought was about lights into the resident, um, any, any lights that, you know, might come over. But I'm sure that'll be something that they'll consider as they, they build it. But um, uh, as uh, Council Member Campbell said, I'm sure disclosure is going to be a part of what Meritage will have to do on, on, on that property. So I think, it, I think you've done well. Thank you. Council Member Stipp. I don't think we should assume that there's going to be um, uh, disclosures by Meritage because they've already been platted and it's not a requirement of their 
for their project, correct? Like we haven't required additional notifications for that development. Yeah, that's, I know the answer to that. I'm looking at Christopher. He's shaking his head behind you, Karen. Um, so let's not assume that there's going to be disclosures. However, to the point that was made earlier, um, you have to know when you're buying a house in this area, there is zero surprise. Now, the folks in Sedea that built there 10 years ago that now are surprised by it, you know, we have to cut them a little bit of slack. But anybody buying a home right now has to absolutely understand what neighborhood they're buying into um, with regard to, uh, you know, the industrial development there. Um, this is, uh, I too do not want to add any additional stipulations. I don't want to do anything uh, further to this project. Um, we are doing zoning tonight, correct? Yes. So um, when site plan occurs, I think there's probably some expectation on site plan that we'll do something to try to mitigate light pollution uh, into the neighborhood. And I don't think that that's unreal, unrealistic, but again, that's a staff driven site approval process. Um, that would truly be my only real concern, but again, you should know what you're getting yourself into um, buying in, in this particular neighborhood. Um, this is a really good project. I think you guys have done a really good job of getting this oriented correctly. Um, you know, I, I appreciate the concern um, about uh, what has happened with UP. Yeah, UPS and the noise issues that we're having. Um, but not every single industrial building or every single commercial building that we build from now on is going to be UPS or going to be FedEx or, you know, that kind of thing. So um, I think kind of having just a little bit of, of caution and care, um, you know, going forward, doing the things that we can. Um, this, is a, this is a difficult parcel just based on its shape anyway. So I think... Um, the fact that it's not going to sit vacant and become a place for hangouts or some of the other issues that we've had uh, in other areas, um, you know, these vacant parcels are going to become fewer and fewer, especially west of the 303 as you look at what is happening north of us and clearly what we're doing. So um, getting these developed early is better than late. Um, so I'm really supportive of this um, project going forward. I didn't mean to put you on the spot, Karen, sorry. But I could see Christopher nodding his head back there. <laughs> Councilmember Bray. Uh, the only comment I have is I remember a few years back when we did the ag stuff, and I think the weird shape of the property is because of the zones from Luke Air Force Base, if I remember right. So the trucks aren't going to be a problem. It's going to be if you can live with F 35s, <laughs> <laughs> which is a good thing for us, but yes. that's going to be a lot bigger issue. All right. Thank you. After all that discussion, I don't have really anything else to add. It's been thoroughly discussed. With that, uh, can I get a vote? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Will the city clerk please read ordinance number 2022-1532 by title only? Adopt ordinance number 2022-1532, conditionally rezoning approximately 159 acres located west of the northwest corner of Indian School and Cotton Lane, from Planned Area Development Pad Zoning District to Planned Area Development Pad Zoning District by amending Ordinance 2007-1082 and the 10303 Business Park Planned Area Development Pad dated June 8, 2007, providing for non-abridgement, correction, severability, and effective date penalties and directing the city clerk to record a copy of this ordinance. Can I have a motion and a second to approve Ordinance 2022-1532? So moved. With that, uh, open for council discussion. Anything else? I think we're good there. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Okay. Mr. Mayor, uh, council members, thank you. It's nice to see a pro-business community. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, the next public hearing item to consider is a rezoning of approximately 9.86 acres from Plan Area Development, PAD, to MF-12 with RPS Indian School and Palm Valley Development Regulations MF-12 with PAD overlay. Uh, with that, open for uh, public discussion. Please introduce yourself there, sir. Good evening, Mayor. Christian Williams, Senior Planner here with the City of Goodyear. I'm here before you this evening with a request from Dennis Newcomb to conduct a rezoning on a property within the city. 
So the property is approximately 9.86 acres, and it is located in North Goodyear on the northeast corner of Pebble Creek Parkway and Indian School Road. The property is currently zoned planned area development with an underlying zoning of commercial, and the property is located in this red box right here, a little L-shaped right there. Zooming in a little closer, you can see that the project is located on a parcel south of the villas at Palm Valley condominiums, north of a regional drainage basin that is owned by the city of Goodyear, west of Palm Valley Phase 5, single-family neighborhood, and also the Pathways or Park Senior Living at the northeast section of it, and it is west of Pebble Creek Parkway and the Paseo Apartments. For a little bit of history on the property and its immediate neighbors, the Greater Palm Valley Phase 5, which surrounds this parcel and includes this parcel, was zoned back in 2003. The following year, this property was zoned as Mixed Uses Zoning District under the Palm Valley Phase 5 Planned Area Development, and that was established through an ordinance in 2004. Oopsie. Um, the underlying zoning designation of MUC is equivalent to the city's C2 zoning. Later that year, in November of 2004, the area containing the villas at Palm Valley condominiums and the Paseo Apartments was rezoned to residential uses. And most recently, in 2012, the area to the northeast of this site took the chunk out of that L, and that created the Pathways Assisted Living Community. Today, the request before you is to rezone the last remnant piece there to a residential use. And as a note, there's a commercial corner still available within Palm Valley Phase 5 that is located about a half a mile to the west at Cerival and Indian School Road. As it relates to other multifamily in the area of Goodyear, that is between McDowell Road on the south, Loop 303 on the west, Dysert on the east, and our city limits to the north, there are 12 established multifamily communities. Eight of them are garden style, two are single family rental, and three are retirement or senior targeted communities. Those are shown in orange. Shown in purple, there are six under development or recently completed. Three are garden style, six are single family rental, and of note, three of those six are BB Living, which are going to be rented down by Civic Square. Shown in yellow, there are three zones for multifamily. One is going to be townhouse style community, one is going to be senior living or assisted living, and one is entitled for multifamily. And then shown in blue is the one development that has an application for the city. That is RPS at Palm Valley Indian School. So the applicant is requesting to zone the property to MF12, which is a multifamily zoning district, with a planned area development overlay to facilitate the development of a townhouse-style development on this L-shaped parcel. The use of the PAD overlay is justified as this current development standards of MF12 do not address some of the unique circumstances found on this L-shaped parcel that is uh, surrounded by other multifamily, and um, now I will cover the details of that PAD overlay on the next slide. Starting with height, the MF12 zoning district allows buildings that are 25 feet in height. It also allows for an additional five feet height of parapet. For the definition of parapet, I'm gonna show you a little example too. A parapet is that area that extends above the roof line that is decorative and conceals things like air conditioning units or things of that nature. However, this would not include a fully covered tile pitched roof. The result sometimes does end up being that you have a lot of two-story buildings that have flat roofs because they cannot extend above that uh, 25 foot in height and still be considered parapet. So uh, for reference, again, this is a tile roof on a building. So you can see it's fully tiled as opposed to a parapet, which is fully flat. So what this zoning ordinance or PAD overlay requests is that a tile roof be considered similar to a parapet, which would allow that five foot of additional height to do the parapet. One of the reasons that's needed is typically on a single floor, you might have eight to 10 feet, especially in the luxury units for higher floors. You might have two to five feet of space between the floors. You can see pretty quickly how we get to 25 feet. So this again would allow for that pitched roof to be counted within that height. As it relates to setbacks, the PAD overlay would allow for the northern side setback to be reduced from 20 feet to 10 feet. This is requested and supported by staff since this parcel abuts a driveway and not another development, and the driveway is common ownership to this site. This also ensures that no building on this site is closer than 100 feet to the condos to the north. On the south side, the request is to reduce the setback from 20 feet to 15 feet, 
as this site is adjacent to a large regional drainage basin that is more than 80 feet wide, which means buildings on the site will not be any closer than 95 feet to Indian School Road. On the east rear side, the developer requests to reduce the rear setback from 30 feet to 10 feet. The northern rear portion of the property is adjacent to Park Senior Living Community, which is developed, contains an existing landscape track, parking lots, and the buildings are located um, more than 70 feet away from where this property could develop. However, adjacent to the single family that is on the south and east, the developers agree to exceed the 30 feet and retain what would be required if this site was developed as commercial, meaning that they're going to have a 50 foot wide setback adjacent to the single family. Additionally, there's some provisions on this that say 15 feet of landscaping is required adjacent to the single family. If parking is added there, there cannot be carports more than 30 feet closer to the single family residential. So again, you're having no structures closer than what a commercial building or a house would be if one was built there. Trash enclosures around residential is also a concern. This PAD clarifies that in no circumstance will a commercial style dumpster be located 20 feet from a residential building on this property. Effectively, we don't want trash underneath units with the smells and things of that nature. The PAD overlay requires pedestrian connections to Pebble Creek Parkway, codifies minimum amenities such as a resort style pool and a tot lot and dog park, turf area, shade outdoor areas. It also ensures pedestrian connections will be made from each unit to the central amenity, affirms the type of paving materials to be used when units are crossing the street or crossing onto an alley, and requires enhanced fire lane gates if they use a fire gate, so no drape, drape chain, Mr. Mayor. And it also codifies some character elements found within the existing Palm Valley Master Plan community and retains that Palm Valley monument sign at the corner of Pebble Creek and Indian School. To date, the city has received um, not received any resident opposition on this case, only calls with general inquiries. Staff has evaluated the impacts of this proposed zoning to the greater community, and with no major concerns being found, staff recommends you approve the rezoning of this property to a planned area development with an underlying zoning of MF12 from its existing underlying zoning of commercial with the RPS Indian School at Palm Valley PAD overlay subject to the stipulations of the staff report. The applicant is here. They don't have a presentation, but are happy to answer any questions if I can't do so. Would the applicant like to say anything at this time? No, Mayor. No. Okay. Any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? With that, I'm going to go ahead and close the public hearing. Will the clerk please read resolution number 2022-22-16 by title only? Adopt resolution number 2022-2216, declaring as public records those certain documents filed with the city clerk entitled official supplementary zoning map number 21-12 in legal description and RPS Indian School at Palm Valley Development Regulations MF12 with pad overlay January 2022. Can I get a motion and a second? Got it. Okay, open for council discussion. Who wants to start off? We'll go over here to the left. Oh, council member Stipp. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we were joking about earlier. No, I, I, I don't have, uh, I don't have anything really to add to the, to the presentation. Um, it's nice to see a different product that's coming in and in, in the rental uh, arena for us. Um, I think we all wish that this would be owner occupied from that perspective, but if you pay any attention to what's happening in the economy, that just isn't possible. So um, really good product, really good fit into the neighborhood. Um, I know we had uh, some preliminary meetings with the uh, developer and the staff on this. Um, and Christian, I appreciate you're trying to get this to fit a little closer to the neighborhood than standing out. Uh, and since I live in that neighborhood, I know my neighbors will appreciate it as well. Um, so this is a good project. I'm happy to support it. Council Member Loretano. I would agree. I really do like the fact that it has the garages and that's, um, I like seeing those come in because it really does get a little more homey feel and it gives them a little more different look. Um, so I do support this. I think it's a good fit for that parcel. There's not much else you can do with that parcel. So I think it's a really good fit for there. So thank you. Councilmember Campbell. Sure. Well, I live in Pebble Creek and that corner has been vacant forever. And just the thought that something's going in there that looks so nice is exciting. I really am happy about the tile roof because every house in Pebble Creek, all 9,000 of us or 10,000 of us now, we all have a tile roof. And if 
they have a tile roof, and part of Palm Valley has a tile roof. It's all going to blend in and look very nicely. And it's also going to be uh, a welcome addition to somewhat buffer the pathways because the pathway sits there all by themselves right now with just this big vacant lot. And I think it's going to enhance the neighborhood. And we do have a lot of folks that are looking for a different type of a housing. And I think this is going to be really exciting for them. And I think it'll be very successful. Vice Mayor. Yeah, I, I think it'll be good there as well. I mean, I appreciate the the diversity of housing stock also, and along with the uh, garage doors, I guess to um, Councilman Loretano as well, if there's any way to fit up for pre-electric cars, that'd be great as well. <laughs> it's just for future for future expanded growth of uh, how this is gonna look like as well. But I appreciate the buffers and also the um, how it will merge with the rest of the the area there so thank you yeah i i like the product uh you know if we we got a shortage of housing stock and the fact that you went with the two-story townhome appearance i believe fits very well within that neighborhood uh as opposed to something going up three four stories you know etc so i really appreciate that with the garages and some of the other uh amenities that you're going to include in there so with that uh i'm all in if so let's get a vote on all in favor aye, aye. aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Will the city clerk please read ordinance number 2022-15-29 by title only. Adopt ordinance number 2022-1529, conditionally rezoning approximately 9.86 acres of property located at the northeast corner of Pebble Creek Parkway and Indian School Road to be known as RPS Indian School at Palm Valley. Amending the zoning map of the city of Goodyear, providing for non-abridgement, providing for corrections, providing for severability, providing for an effective date, providing for penalties, and directing the city clerk to record a copy of this ordinance. Thank you. Can I get a motion and a second to approve ordinance 2022-1529? So moved. <laughs> I don't think you got that one. Uh, I think we've got the vice mayor motion. Who was the second? Patrick. Patrick. Councilmember Bray. There you go. Okay, no, you got it now, right? Okay. With that, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you. Next public hearing items to consider is a public hearing rezoning approximately 30.32 acres from Plan Area Development, PAD, to MF-24 with Anton at Ballpark Village Development Regulations, MF-24 with PAD overlay. Let's open the public hearing. Uh, please introduce yourself. Still sitting here, Christian Williams, Senior Planner, City of Goodyear. For everyone watching for this exciting case. Here with a rezoning request from Andy Yoakum for a property within the city. So before I get into today's case, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about this area and what you might expect to see coming to you in the next coming months. I want to start by talking about the Goodyear City Center and I'm saying some of this for some of those listening because I've received some calls concerning cases in this area. City Center referred to a general plan land use designation that was established at the four corners of Estrella Parkway and Yuma Road. It was envisioned to be the home of Goodyear City Hall dating back to the 1980s and City Center, City Center called for an area to be high density like a downtown Goodyear with a city hall. In the early 2000s, Goodyear constructed the Goodyear Ballpark and this has since become the home to the Goodyear Guardians and Cincinnati Reds. The ballpark has long served as a crown jewel for Central Goodyear. When council decided to move the proposed city hall from city center to Civic Square, or the Estrella Falls Village Center, they directed staff to ensure this area at Estrella and Yuma was developed in a special manner. In particular, remember you saying, I want this area to be very special. In response, developers have been excited to come into this area and create a village center in the ballpark area. A village center or village center overlay basically encourages the development of an area that is cohesive, feels connected, and a bit more special than the rest. It allows for higher density, promotes walkability, a mix of uses, and a sense of pride. In response to new developments being interested in the area, a major general plan amendment occurred in December of 2021, and the adjacent city center overlay has since been removed and replaced with neighborhood and business and commerce land uses to allow for a mix of housing and retail to come into the area. The area was designed to be a village center, designated as also a village center. 
Planning staff also took the lead on furthering the vision for this area based on council feedback from work sessions. We worked with Gailene Aslonski from the Parks and Recreation Arts and Culture Division and worked with an artist to create a logo to bring unity and an identity and brand to this area. This logo has been shared with all the developers in the area surrounding the ballpark contained within this red boundary. And staff has also developed a concept to bring art to the area. A monument that also serves as a mural and a gateway entry into this area was brought to the development community and is envisioned for major corners in this area, some of which you can see on the stars in the map. With that being said, today's case is the first of many cases that have been submitted since the city initiated the general plan amendment and asked, for this, uh, and asked the development community to brand the greater area as Ballpark Village. And as a note, developments underway in this area, such as Avion at Ballpark Village, are already working to incorporate that Ballpark Village logo into the aesthetics of their community and the shared community identity. That being said, let's talk about Anton. So the property is approximately 30.32 acres and is located in Central Goodyear in the Ballpark Village area at the southwest corner of Bullard Avenue and Yuma Road. The property is currently developed planned area development with an underlying zoning of commercial and industrial. The property is located in this red, weird-shaped U triangle that is located southwest of Yuma and Bullard. And if you exit I-10 from Bullard, there's actually a sign that says Goodyear Ballpark. So this will be one of the first sites you see as you're entering the Ballpark Village area. Zooming in a little closer, you can see that the project is located on that triangular U-shaped parcel with the Goodyear Water Campus being surrounded by it. The parcel is south of the Compass Data Center's development, north of the Goodyear Water Campus, and kind of inside of it. Uh, it's east of the LGE Airport Logistics Center development, and west of the city-owned Bullard Wash, and it is east of the, the site I just mentioned. And as a note, this site does not fall within the Phoenix Goodyear Airport DNL or noise area. The current zoning, again, for this site is City Center Air Park Planned Area Development that was established in 2006 through an ordinance. And the underlying zoning for this is, again, commercial and industrial. We're talking about the site right here. So there's only about 2.5 acres of commercial. It's about the size of a Walgreens. And then the remnant is uh, light industrial, pretty small parcels that are, are surrounding it. Um, of note, as was stated earlier in the presentation, you will be receiving additional zoning requests in this immediate area that are con going to convert additional properties to other residential and other commercial uses. And as a note, the general plan land use for this property is business and commerce, which does allow for higher density residential uses. As it relates to other multifamily in the area of Goodyear between McDowell Road on the north, future State Route 30 on the south, Perryville Road on the west, and Bullard Avenue to the east, there are eight established multifamily communities. One is for the baseball team, five are traditional garden-style apartments, and two are single-family rentals. Those are shown in orange. Shown in purple, there are eight under development or recently completed. Two of those are garden style. Six of those are single family rental. Shown in yellow, there are 20 zoned for multifamily. Nine are likely to be single family rental or, single or townhouse style. Nine are likely to be garden style. Two are part of city center and likely to be rezoned. Of note, one has an application in for a rezone today at the northeast corner of Astray and Yuma, which will have retail and multifamily as part of Ballpark Village. And shown in blue, there are four developments you will likely see in the future, one of which is the one we were talking about today, Anton at Ballpark Village. The applicant is requesting the property be zoned to MF24, multifamily residential district, with a planned area development overlay to facilitate the development of three-story walk-up garden-style apartments, townhouse-style apartments with tuck-under garages, and single-family rental-style community and the propose, they propose to have a range of housing types all on one site. The PAD overlay requires a minimum density of 16 units per acre, and this is because the general plan land use for this area is business and commerce, again, which wants higher density residential if it is to be residential. The use of the PAD overlay is justified as the current development for the MF24 zoning district does not address some of the unique circumstances found on this parcel, such as its peculiar shape, the desire for three types of unique housing product in multifamily, and I will cover those uh, requirements on the next page. And as a note, the rendering and site plan you see on the right are not final, but if the zoning is approved today, 
it will go to administrative site plan process and the site plan must be in conformance with the zoning that we would approve today if it is approved. So I'll highlight a few of those um, development requirements and if you have any other questions, don't hesitate to ask. We'll start with the design guidelines. Typically the MF24 zoning district is intended for a two or three story style apartment building and the design guidelines are written as such. So once a site is zoned, staff refers to the design guidelines for the site plan review. Since three products are being designed on this site, one of which is more akin to a single family rental product, this document ensures that those types of three unit, two unit, or one unit buildings are going to be designed to meet our MF12 standards with a few modifications. Those devi deviations are including that the units along Bullard Wash may be separated by 10 feet as opposed to 15 feet since the wash is abutting them and a trail will be placed on the wash. And this is not going to be a site full of just single story units that are very the same. The design for those buildings will follow established themes that are in the area and use a variety of colors, materials found within the ballpark village area to add some vibrancy beyond those grays and tans. For setbacks, the PAD contemplates that the parcel may be further subdivided into additional lots. All setbacks will be applicable to the perimeter of the property and due to the shape of the parcel, the PAD establishes that Yuma Road and Bullard Avenue will utilize the typical MF24 streetscape setback of 30 feet. Bullard Wash will use the typical MF24 side setback, and the water campus will be viewed as a side setback of 20 feet. Parking in this development will be provided, provided by a mix of garages, tandem parking in front of the garage, covered parking, open parking, and tandem open parking. In order to provide the city with certainty and assurances as it relates to parking, they will provide a parking management plan to the city, which will be approved as part of the site plan. And an example of a tandem parking site is located here, very similar to some other recent projects we've uh, approved in some more mixed use type developments. Private open space. The MF24 residential units is required to have a dedicated private open space in the form of a yard, patio, balcony, with a minimum aggregate foot of square footage of 60 feet. With Anton at Ballpark Village, the minimum aggregate overall side yard patio square footage may reduce below 60 feet to 55 feet. This reduction shall only be allowed for no more than 20% of the dwelling units on the property, and that shall be clearly demonstrated on the site plan. And the deviation would also allow for five foot versus six foot balconies to add more variety and diversity to the building architecture. As discussed elsewhere, the common um, Sorry about that. As discussed elsewhere, additional common open space and recreational amenities will be provided, including the construction of a trail in the city-owned Bullard Wash to support the reduction in the patio outdoor open space. Additionally, ground floor patios may encroach in the landscape setback if they are constructed to the sidewalk, or if they have a connection to the sidewalk via a pathway. Again, the goal here is that if there's ground floor units with patios, they have a walkout, they can walk right over to the sidewalk and walk right over to the ballpark village core by the ballpark and support that future retail opportunity that will be provided there. For the MF12 units, private yards of the dwelling units that are not along the perimeter of the property uh, shall be permitted a reduction of the 200 square foot, 250 square foot, and 25% of square foot reduction of minimum private open space on some of the dwelling units still leaves a large usable space, eight by 20 foot yard, if you think about it that way, which is offset by additional common open space and certainty in the um, overall amenities in addition to the Bullard Wash Trail. If a studio unit with less than 600 square feet is included, the unit shall be permitted to have a 40 square foot patio for their private outdoor space with a minimum depth of five feet and those units will operate and feel more like a traditional apartment as opposed to a single family rental. So one of the concepts they're looking at is an above studio rental to provide some different product variety. So it has to be less than 600 square feet to do that. The developer will also codify those minimum amenity requirements on the site for the general recreational use by all of the development. That'll be a minimum square, uh, 8,000 square foot, including outdoor covered patios for the clubhouse leasing office. Those may be in separate buildings a minimum of two resort style pools, shaded seating areas, dog park, fitness center, an outdoor barbecue area, tot lots, and turf areas. The developer also again agrees to construct a 10 to 12 foot wide decomposed granite trail on the city property in the Bullard Wash. 
The trail is not currently funded in our CIP. The developers agree to complete this work and the trail will be installed before any structures are built and certificate of occupant get a CFO west of the water campus. So again, they're agreeing that anything west of the water campus will not get a CFO until they build a trail on the city property that is accessible to all residents of the city. The developer will also build a ballpark village monument, the monument I'll show you again on the next slide, which will match the themes found in the ballpark area and it will include a large mural placed on it with publicly facing art. I'll also highlight that the developer will widen Bullard Avenue in front of our city water campus. So again, this, is this, this frontage is our frontage right here, would typically be our obligation to widen and the developer is agreeing that they are going to go ahead and widen that frontage in front of our water campus Again, that's not budgeted in the CIP, and they're going to do that for the city. To date, the city has not received any resident opposition to this case, only calls with general inquiries. Staff has evaluated the impacts of this proposed zoning to the greater community, and with no major concerns being staff found, staff recommends you approve the rezoning of the property from planned area development overlay with an underlying zoning of commercial and industrial to MF24 with the Anton at Ballpark Village planned area development overlay, subject to the stipulations found in the staff report. If you do opt to vote for approval of this, I would ask that you change two things. One, what I, I would ask that in the ordinance, if you choose to approve it, under stipulation five, where it says, uh, the first sentence says, I would like it to say, owner, if they own them, shall, because they may not own the water, they do not own the water rights, the type one water rights on this property. So if they own them, they shall convey them to the city. And in the PAD under item 22, I'd ask that you renumber the items A through F to um, renumber those items to say A through F versus D through I. That's a Scribner's error. And under letter B, instead of it saying on the ridge of the wash running from, that it say in a location to be determined during the site plan process that extends from. The reason for that are there's some floodplain constraints on the city property. We want to give some flexibility to where that trail is placed so that, again, they can provide this amenity for the public. With that, happy to take any questions. Applicant, like to say anything at this time? Uh, good evening. My name is Paul Gilbert, 701 North 44th Street. Um, I'm not the brightest guy in the shed, but I learned a long time ago the futility of trying to supplement one of Kristen's <laughs> presentations. Uh, so I think everything you wanted to know about that project, he's made known to you. Um, and <clears throat> we have worked very closely with the staff on this case. A couple of just really quick observations uh, that I wanted to make, and that is the adjustments that we're making in the ordinance that Christian pointed out to us are vital to us because we can't do what we need to, be, to do for this project without those minor changes. We'd be happy to elaborate those in more detail should you need that further information. In light of the plethora of information Christian gave you, it's easy to overlook three very important things that my client is doing that makes this project so exciting. One, not, we're not obligated to, there's no legal requirement that can be imposed on us, but we are going to build the wash, the Bullard wash. So we've agreed to do that, and that's a stipulation. We're going to stick with it. Secondly, we've agreed to put the monument sign up for the ballpark, which is a major commitment on our part. And then thirdly, we are going to improve Bullard in front of the city uh, water station, uh, again, which would otherwise be an obligation of the city. Uh, I just wanted to point out to you that this applicant has been a very good citizen and has agreed to do these three things that normally would not be required and are far beyond what would be required under a case of this nature. Lastly, I thought it was important that you get to know who the developer is. So, Mike, I'm going to let you introduce yourself and tell a little bit about yourself and the project. Yeah. N no more than 20 minutes. Sure thing. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to uh, try to add anything to Christian's description either. I just wanted to say, first of all, Mayor and Council, thank you for, for taking the time to listen to us today. 
we are so excited to be in Goodyear. You know, we we define success in, in, in our company and within our partners as being invited to back for a second project. So we're doing things that, um, you know, we, we hope the city finds value in, that we think will add character and uh, amenities to the neighborhoods. And we just want to make it a better place than, than when we started. So we're excited to be here and we really do appreciate it. And I also will echo previous uh, applicants and, and developers that have been before you and thanking the city staff, specifically Christian and his uh, in leading us through this process efficiently. Um, the cycle review times were, were efficient and uh, the direction given was, was excellent so that we could you know, direct our consultant teams and design teams and uh, you know, without, without wasting a lot of extra pen work and, and design time. So, you know, for us, it's been a, it's, it's been a very positive experience so far and we just thank you. And, and we also thank the city staff. Good. Happy to answer any questions. Okay. Thank you. Be any even speakers? more happy if we don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> any speaker cards? No, mayor. Anybody in the audience like to speak? All right, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Uh, will the clerk please read resolution number 2022-2217 by title only. Adopt resolution number 2022-2217 declaring as public records of certain documents filed with the city clerk entitled official supplementary zoning map number 21-18 in legal description and Anton at Ballpark Village development regulations MF12 with pad overlay March 2022. Just a question for the attorney on some of the items that Christian had mentioned, do we have to, on the motion that's made in the second, do we have to incorporate those in there? Yes. Or, okay, how's that going to? I think you can just make your motion and reference the, the changes that uh, Christian stated in his presentation and incorporate those into the, the motion. I'll be on the second item, though. Right, I'll be in the ordinance, not the, the rest. It's in the ordinance, so it's not in the first one. Not in the first one. in the, the second, second one. one. Okay. Can I get a motion and a second to approve resolution uh, 2022-2217? So move. Second. Open for council discussion. Go ahead, council member Stipp. I, I don't, um, good project. So don't freak out over, because I can't see you guys now behind the podium. So don't freak out. Um, you know, my only concern at, at this point is Seeing this ballpark village monument for the very first time in this presentation is a little disturbing. Um, that there was, you know, here we are, we're, we're forcing monuments into a situation and we've not seen it. Um, I don't think I have, and I'm looking around here and I'm not seeing anybody else who has either. So I'm concerned about that, but I'm not going to let it stop the project. But I think procedurally, it's kind of a problem. Um, as we uh, as we go forward, perhaps there was a different way to brand that. Perhaps it was something that the council should have been looped in on a little bit earlier, or at least thrown into our wheelhouse. Um, since Councilmember Lortano liked that earlier, um, but this is a really good project. I think we've got a developer who is, uh, as has been pointed out, is going above uh, what they what they should be doing and need to do. Um, in an area that clearly needs, um, if we're going to take advantage of the wash in that area, um, these are great things and great amenities. Um, this is turning into quite an exciting area for us, so I don't dispute the mo monument and branding. I just dispute the process. So with that, I'm happy to support it. Council Member Loretano. I do appreciate the, the project and the the general renderings, I know it's not going to be exactly, but what, what we're looking at here, I think it's very hip and very modern and it fits great with that area and it's a different in diversity in our housing stock. So I do support it and I appreciate the developer going above and beyond for those other um, issues with the, the wash and the road and just making this an area with a lot of character. So I support it um, as to the project. Thank you. Council Member Bray. All good. Council Member Arcano. This is a great project, and I appreciate the diversity of the three types of projects that are going to be inside of it. Curious about it, it doesn't look like it's fenced, so it's 
completely walkable. So the current plan is that those um, majority of it's not fenced. The buildings are acting as a security, so there would be fencing in between. But the, the whole uh, concept in the PAD overlay is that there's pedestrian connectivity so that these people are walking into the ballpark okay. area. Great. I want to thank you for not doing 30 acres of single family rentals and also that uh, you've diversified what it looks like. It's not a bungalow. It's not looking like every other single family rental. The um, I'm curious for you, Christian, with this project, will the traffic light at Yuma and Bullard now be ready to get off a wire and be a real traffic light? There are stipulations in this um zoning case that address the 25% signal obligation. There's a lot of developments at that corner of those, so right. staff will be coordinating with those okay. on how that We're getting goes. closer then. Yes. Good, very good. And uh, I do like the idea of integrating this whole community in some sort of fashion with art and certainly a logo. I, I would have to say probably the manner that it did was, was surprising, but I, I think it's on the right track and definitely appreciate the developer support of uh, making this something special. Council Member Campbell. Well, I too wish we would have had some input on the monument sign. I just think something that's like this, uh, we need to see before it comes. I mean, I almost feel like we're going to have another ziz here. And I don't want another ziz. So, but the project itself is lovely. I think it's a great. Uh, use of that corner, and I, I really like the walkable part, and I really want to thank um, the developer for your willingness to do a, a path in the Bullard Wash. That's, that's wonderful, and we appreciate that very much because eventually we hope to have paths all through that Bullard Wash someday. Um, I like the, having the garages the way you got them and the different types of parking areas, and I like having... Th three stories, and then once some folks that want the one story, they could get that as well. So thank you so much for it. And um, is this monument sign the final? No, the art Good. in the monument sign is not picked. The, the, the bases oh. are the same on all the corners. It's the art inside that the developers will design. Oh, so you're still going to have the wings sticking out with the bats? Okay. Um, is there any discussion at all? Do we need a, a permanent light at that intersection? The light, the traffic signal will be improved with working with the development community. And we'll do a, a real one in there instead of the hanging one. At some point, as all those corners start to develop, this, the city will work through Okay, very good. Thank you. City manager. I'm sorry. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, I'm hearing a lot of um, questions about the monument. Uh, this is the third project um, that we've worked with the developer on this particular concept. The other two were Avion and Sun, Sun MP, um, but certainly we can bring back a separate presentation just on the, the logoing if yeah, Council would okay. prefer. It's too late now. It's done. Vice Mayor. Yeah, no, I appreciate um, the branding. Um, I do agree it needs to be a special a special place, to your point of quoting me there. But um, And I do appreciate all the extra things that they're doing in this area, so all the extra de attention to detail uh, with the path and monument. And will there, be, will there be a sidewalk partial completion north of them along Yuma Road as well? Is that part of the... North of Yuma? On, on Yuma, just north of them. Oh. On the south side of Yuma, they will south complete a sidewalk on the south side of Yuma as part of their project. Okay. Yeah. One day I'd like to get the sidewalk, obviously, all the way across Yuma so the kids who live in Old Town, Goodyear, can walk to uh, Desert Edge High School if they need to. But, um, and then, yeah, so I appreciate that. And is that trail part of the um, Maricopa County? trail system is that it's on circle i believe it's a section of the sun circle ultimately the bullard wash trail is yeah i thought it was part of it so i know that connects up to the sidewalk and then eventually gets to australia so okay that was uh that's all i had so thank you not much more to add after that discussion i do appreciate this uh branding 
and what these three different products are going to look like. I really appreciate mixing it up so it's not all the same. So I appreciate those efforts. And I also appreciate stepping up and putting in some of the things that you're really not required to do to, to dress up the area. So thank you for that as well. Uh, with that, uh, time for the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Will the city clerk please read ordinance number 2022-1530 by title only? Adopt ordinance number 2022-1530, conditionally rezoning approximately 30.32 acres of property located at the southwest corner of Bullard Avenue and Yuma Road to be known as Anton at Ballpark Village. Amending the zoning map of the city of Goodyear, providing for non-abridgement, providing for corrections, providing for severability, providing for an effective date, providing for penalties, and directing the city clerk to record a copy of this ordinance. Now, this is the one uh, city attorney where can I get a motion in a second to approve the... Uh, Ordinance 2022-1530 with the uh, additional information supplied by, by yes, by, by, by staff. staff. The, the suggested stipulation modifications uh, supplied by staff, yes. Is that, are we that good? Be sufficient. Mm -hmm. Is sufficient? Am I good? Okay. You're good. All right, with that, can I get the motion? So moved. Second. Okay. All right, with that, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Um, we've got another public hearing, but I was just wondering, does anybody want to take a 10-minute break to hit the... Please. Okay. Why don't we pause for about 10 minutes? And uh, yes. <laughs> and we'll be back in 10. All right. <laughs>
Next public hearing item is to consider as a draft 20 fiscal year 2022-23 action plan for housing and urban development HUD community development block grant program. Open the public hearing. Please introduce yourself. Thank you, Mayor, Council. I'm Christina Panatescu, the Grants and Neighborhood Services Supervisor for the City of Goodyear. I am here uh, this evening uh, for the public hearing section of the CDBG um, annual plan for fiscal year 23. Council's familiar with this information, but since it is a public hearing, I feel it's important to restate some key points for the benefit of the public who may be interested in providing comments on the draft documents. So this evening I will cover key points regarding uh, the national objectives and our city priorities from the consolidated plan, as well as the uh, federal constraints on action plan activities, the activities proposed or in our um, draft action plan that are informed from the work session we had a few weeks ago and the next steps. But um, so there are some constraints on how the city can use these funds. CDBG activities must benefit low to moderate income individual households or neighborhoods. As a reminder, a family of four earning a little over $62,000 a year is considered low mod income. There are about 5,800 households in Goodyear who would be eligible using LMI criteria. Activities can also occur in an area with a higher concentration of low mod income households indicated on the map as the shaded area or serve specific populations who are presumed to be low mod income by HUD. They're called limited clientele and they're specifically indicated by the bulleted list on this slide. Last year, as required by HUD, the city adopted a consolidated plan which provides the big umbrella framework for how we will use our CDBG entitlement funding. It gets updated every five years unless we have a need to amend it earlier. And it gets implemented through these annual action plans. Activities have to fit into one of the eligible priority areas from our consolidated plan. You can see that when we established the priorities, preference was given to community facilities and improvement, <coughs> pardon me, along with public services and program administration. Although funds could be used for attainable and sustainable housing or eligible economic development projects if an exceptional opportunity prevented mm -hmm. itself, these were generally classified as lower priority activities for the time being. The document we are taking public comment on this evening is the document that tells HUD how we plan to spend our upcoming allocation. It needs to name specific activities and the activities must be tied to one of the priorities from the city's five-year plan. That said, in fiscal year 23, the city anticipates receiving approximately 429000 $38 in CDBG funds, 80% of which will be used for community facilities and 20% for program administration and planning. If the Goodyear allocation is higher or lower than anticipated, funds for each activity will be proportionally increased or decreased. We still have not heard from HUD our actual allocation, but we understand the budget has been passed and there working out the fine details, and we hope to know soon. Uh, CDBG is a complex grant program and it requires intensive administration and oversight. So we intend to continue to reserve the full 20% allowable for administration and apply these resources towards a neighborhood assessment conducted in fiscal year 23, which will be phase two of our community and neighborhood services master plan among other administrative activities directly related to the CDBG program. The community improvement funds will be leveraged to provide significant reconfiguration and remodeling to address the needs of children with trauma-informed care in the Child Development Center at New Life Center. 
New Life Center is a domestic violence shelter geographically located in Goodyear, making its residents Goodyear residents. Furthermore, the child care facilities serve the residents of the shelter, meeting the low mod income benefit national objective through HUD's limited clientele presumed benefit population I mentioned earlier. In this scenario, New Life Center will be a subrecipient of the city's CDBG dollars and is subject to all of the corresponding terms and conditions. The city will be responsible for compliance and oversight as well as reporting to HUD and New Life Center is responsible for the difference between the city's allocation and the total actual project costs which are estimated to be about $524,000. They will manage the project, submit for reimbursement from the city, and provide any required reporting to enable the city to fulfill its obligation to HUD. With that, um, after this evening, public comment will remain open for a few more days, all the way through April 20th, and instructions for public comment can be found at the city's website, goodyearaz.gov forward slash cdbg. Staff will bring back final drafts of the documents and any public comments received will be incorporated into that draft on May 2nd for your approval and to authorize staff to submit the plans to HUD. And that will allow us to be in by the deadline um, and then the funds will be available beginning July 1. And that completes my presentation. Any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Anybody in the audience like to speak? With that, close the public hearing. This item is for public hearing and public input only. There is no action before council. However, it will be back before council at a later date for discussion. Thank you. Thank you. With that, now we move on to business. I would like to remind council to wait for a motion and a second before discussion. First item on business is to consider approving proposals to Gila River, Gila River Indian Community for Arizona Revised Statutes 5-601-02, 12% gaming distribution funds. Please introduce yourself. Hello again, I am still Christina Panatescu, the Grants and Neighborhood Services Coordinator for the city of Goodyear. And I'm here this evening, no, no PowerPoint, um, just to let you know that the Gila River Indian community is seeking proposals for their 2022 state shared revenue grant program. Uh, the proposals must address one or more of the following priority areas, economic development, education, healthcare, public safety, or transportation. Responses are due no later than April 1st. Funded applications will be notified in August, and funds will be on, available on or before October 25th. Tonight, I am seeking council approval per our grants policy to submit three applications on behalf of the city. An engineering department application addressing the funder's transportation priority, seeking support for the citywide effort to eliminate scalloped streets, this request is for the maximum funding available for a capital project, $500,000, to be awarded over two years, $250,000 a year. Also, a Parks Department application re uh, responsive to the tourism priority category and economic development, requesting $100,000 to expand the reach of the planned Goodyear Tourism Campaign leveraging the Super Bowl and spring training, and also a healthcare application from the fire department seeking $100,000 a year for three years to fund cancer screening of sworn and fire investigation employees over the age of 40. None? Any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Is there anybody in the audience who want to speak? Seeing none, will the city clerk please read resolution number 2022-2224 by title only. Adopt resolution number 2022-2224 authorizing the submission of a transportation funds application for state shared revenue grant program funds to the Gila River Indian community. Authorizing the city manager to execute all documents relating to said applications and authorizing the city manager to execute a grant agreement if grant funds are awarded 
and authorizing the city manager to approve the required budget transfer if grant funds are awarded. Can I get a motion and a second to approve resolution 2022-2224? So moved. Second. Got it. Open for council discussion. Looking around, not seeing any. Whip. Everybody good? All right, we'll go ahead and then call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Will the city clerk please read resolution number 2022-2225 by title only? Adopt resolution number 2022-2225, authorizing the submission of a tourism application for state shared revenue grant program funds to the Gila River Indian community, authorizing the city manager to execute all documents relating to said applications and authorizing the city manager to execute a grant agreement if grant funds are awarded, and authorizing the city manager to approve the required budget transfer if grant funds are awarded. Can I have a motion to second to approve resolution 2022-2225? Second. Got it. Let's see, uh, open council discussion. All good. All right, ready for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Will the city clerk please read resolution number 2022-2226 by title only? Adopt resolution number 2022-2226, authorizing the submission of a health care funds application for state shared revenue grant program funds to the Gila River Indian community. Authorizing the city manager to execute all documents relating to said applications and authorizing the city manager to execute a grant agreement if grant funds are awarded and authorizing the city manager to approve the required budget transfer if grant funds are awarded. Can I have a motion a second to approve resolution 2022-2226? So moved. All right. Open for council discussion. See none. Um, call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I have it. Uh, next item on business is to consider approving a comprehensive sign package for Australia Commons District. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Thank you, Mayor. Alex Lestinsky, Senior Planner. The comprehensive sign package that I have before you is located at Australia Commons, um, the Australia Commons District, uh, northeast corner of Australia Parkway and Roosevelt Street just east of the Walmart uh, Shopping Center, just north of Aldi, and then west of Fulton at Hudson Commons. That's moving quickly. Um, the property was rezoned to a MF24 and C2 zoning districts with a PAD overlay to modify some of the development standards. Um, that was done in July of 2021, so you might be familiar with this. Um, just as a reminder, the Comprehensive Sign Package, or CSP as I might refer to it, um, is a coordinated sign program um, to enhance the design uh, within the development area. And modifica modifications to the city's signs, sign ordinance may be requested by the developer, um, but that does require approval by the city council. So this exhibit, um, this is I-10 over here. Um, and so north facing, Estrella Parkway is this south line, and then Roosevelt here. Um, there's five pads lined up along Estrella Parkway and then the apartment complex um, between Fulton and those commercial pieces. So these red um, blocks are what the main major requests for deviation from the zoning ordinance refer to. Some of those signs, um, this one is right on the corner, which is uh, opposite the existing sign for Australia Commons today. So um, you've seen this existing sign. Um, their, their proposal is to match it exactly the same um, on their property. Um, the modification for monument signs, the zoning ordinance for commercial areas allows up to 48 square feet. Um, and then the maximum proposal for this sign package is going up to 73 square feet. So that's only on actually one of the signs proposed. And the addition um, is for the Acero apartment complex, which is on the bottom of this sign. So um, with just the, the monu or with the um, tenant signs, it's 58 square feet on one of the monuments. The second one requests that increase uh, for the apartment signage. 
With that, the increase of height for the monument sign, what's allowed today is 12 feet maximum, and the applicant is requesting a 14-foot um, monument sign, so increasing the two feet in height. The quantity allowed by the uh, zoning ordinance is one per driveway. For this center, based on the, um, the size of it, the applicant is requesting one per street frontage. So um, the applicant did explain to the Planning and Zoning Commission um, it is more common to do less signage, less number of monuments um, in, in lieu of more square footage of area. So it's a little bit cleaner, um, but they can also explain that to you if you'd like. Uh, similarly, the requested modification to gasoline service station signs, um, the maximum height is being requested to change, so that's going from six feet in height to eight feet in height. And then the sim almost identical to that one, a residential monument sign for multifamily, six feet is allowed, eight foot is being proposed. Um, all other signs included in the package, including uh, wall signage for the commercial development, uh, wayfinding signs, everything else will meet the city zoning ordinance. Um, it meets the evaluation criteria set by the zoning ordinance. Uh, we find that the modifications are appropriate and acceptable given the location. Uh, and the Planning and Zoning Commission recommended approval on March 16th. That concludes my presentation. The developer and uh, sign package developer is here for any questions you might have. Thank you. Any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Is there anybody you want to speak? Can I get a motion and a second to approve the comprehensive sign package for Australia Commons District subject to stipulations? So moved. Second. Oh, okay. All right. With that open for council discussion, who wants to start it? Council Member Stipp. You know, it, the signs are the only way people are finding where everything's at. Uh, and there's so much traffic and whatnot. So um, if I guess I would just ask staff if we're starting to see a lot more requests for these to be bumped up in size that maybe we consider an internal ordinance change. Um, but other than that, I'm supportive of this. This, uh, this is a big area, uh, lots of moving parts in there. So I think we need to get as many signs as we can. It also keeps us from having to deal with the, uh, the bandit signs and all the rest of the stuff if we can provide some good um, signage for the businesses that are going in there. Any other? Well, question. Heather, Council Member Campbell. Um, so is the Speedway gas station going on that corner? Uh, Council Member Campbell? Uh, yes, Speedway has submitted an application for that, this. Your, your map is so busy, I couldn't tell what was where. So that's right. Speedway right there? Correct. And that's on Roosevelt? Yes, Roosevelt is here. Australia Parkway going north is here. Okay. All right, and each of those red squares is where they want to put a sign up? That is correct. A different sign at each one or? Um, the E1, this is the, the big brick that matches with the one to the south uh, by Aldi and Starbucks. This F1 is, I believe, the, the Speedway gas station sign. Um, this one, M1A and M1B, are the multi-tenant monument signs. And then this one closer to the entry to the apartment is the kind of matching gasoline one for the apartments. Okay. I like the Speedway sign because people whipping down Pebble Creek Parkway can get a good look at what the price of gas is and if they're going to stop. And Speedway is a great gate. It's a great gas station. So, okay, thank you. That, okay. that was my only question. Yeah, I don't, I don't have anything to add to discussion. I, I like what you've done here. Uh, see, with that being said, it's time for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Uh, does council have any comments, commendations, or reports on current events you want to talk about? Ooh. Over here to the left. Over I do. Here. I do. I'm here sorry. To the right. Sky Kids was Saturday, and it was absolutely phenomenal, and the kids were wonderful. And I have to tell you a story. There's a young man by the name of Elias, and he has autism. And he came to our first uh, Sky Kids in 2012 and rode with a pilot who let him kind of take the controls a little bit. And he was so thrilled 
And as soon as he got home, he told his mother that he wanted to be an R. What is it? Do you remember? Aeronautical Engineer. engineer. Yeah, and go. this young man graduates from a charter school in May, and he has been accepted to Penn State Engineering, ASU Engineering, and Embry-Riddle. And he came Saturday, so he said to me, I just want to show other kids you can be anything you want to be, and I'd like to come back every year. And I told him we'd love to have him every year because he's such a wonderful role model. So I just wanted to let you know it was very successful, and it was a wonderful event. Great event. Great event. I was there as well. So anything else? Uh, city manager have anything? Price is right. You're on talk. <laughs> All right. The next meeting will be a work session immediately followed by a regular meeting beginning at 5 p.m. on April 4th, uh, 2022. With that, no further business.